Supreme Court decisions, uh, we've seen an attack pretty much on affirmative action. Uh, well, not so much an attack on affirmative action, but uh, an attack on voting rights. Uh, the decision on affirmative action, I think, uh, did not destroy the affirmative action uh, policies, uh, which Dr. King was very much in favor of. Uh, many conservatives, I mentioned before the last segment, at the end of the last segment, that uh, Dr. King always felt uh, that affirmative action should be in place, not simply for black people, but for all poor people. And, and he felt that affirmative action should be need-based and not so much race-based. And, 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 and that's important. That has been pretty much kept in place, uh, despite the fact that you have many attacks on affirmative action from the religious right and from the political right. But when it comes to voting rights, of course, we've seen over the last few days an effort to erode this whole idea of federal oversight. Uh, when you look at states like Alabama, my home state, Mississippi, Arkansas, those southern states, uh, which, of course, as you well know in the past, have had many problems with voting, uh, we wonder what will happen now. Because what happened with the Supreme Court decision is that you had pretty much the elimination of federal oversight of voting processes in these states. So what will happen? Will uh, the votes be counted? Uh, will, will blacks uh, be intimidated at the polls? Uh, we have these kinds of questions now. And, and it all, I think, uh, amounts to uh, a kind of uh, backing away from Dr. King's legacy because as you well know Dr. King was all about voting rights not only voting rights but the right of people to hold public office and we know that in 1965 the march from Selma to Montgomery was all about achieving not only voting rights but the right of political participation and we've seen over the last few years efforts to intimidate voters a voter suppression. We saw that in the last presidential election. And we wonder what will happen now, now that uh, uh, federal oversight of the voting processes in, these in this country mm -hmm. have been sort of what? Eroded mm -hmm. with uh, the recent Supreme Court decision. Mm -hmm. and, so, and so in a real sense, I think the challenge is, is, is really to almost rewrite, uh, in a real sense, the uh, whole history of voting in this country because uh, uh, you just can't sit back and not do anything. Exactly. And, and I think the pattern has already been laid out as to how you uh, accomplish uh, voting rights in this country. Do you think that it, it, it now requires us to do the same thing and get it back into the streets, the it, same kind of activity? I hope not, but it may require a kind of reoccurrence of what was happening in the 1960s. And of course, leaders like Al Sharpton have already said mm -hmm. that perhaps we will have to take to the streets again. Mm -hmm. Uh, to make sure that uh, voting rights are secured. Uh, but I hope it doesn't, but it may very well require mm -hmm. some of the same kind of activism that occurred mm -hmm. in the 1960s. Mm -hmm. Very good, and, and, and so, that, that, so the uh, Voting Rights Act of, eight, of 1965 is part of Dr. King's legacy. It's part and, of his and, legacy, and so, yeah. And, and th that is only the political side. Of what, what are some of the other things that will draw us out and, and perhaps convince folks that uh, there is a real need for mm. some kind of action during this time, whether it's just writing letters or whether it's marching. Yes, or whatever I, th I think writing letters to congressmen is very, very important, and Al Sharpton has uh, recommended that. I think we also have to uh, we have to look at the possibility of nonviolent the possibilities of nonviolent direct action in the form of marches and demonstrations. I think that's still relevant to our times. Uh, but the important thing is to make sure that people's right to vote uh, is secured and, and all Americans' right to vote uh, is secured and we have to do whatever necessary to make sure that that happens. <laughs> and, and, and so in a real sense, uh, Dr. King's assassination uh, uh, left a legacy mm -hmm. of struggle in a real sense. And, 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 and a legacy of activism. And activism. Yes, and, and, yes. And, and so uh, in order for us to live up to uh, what Dr. King was all about, then mm -hmm. we have to at least do something. We yes. just can't, cannot decide. And what about just actual 
uh, uh, participation in the suffrage, which is to say that there are so many folks who don't vote, who don't vote, exactly, and who are not registered to vote, and who uh, and, and 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 some and, and I know in some of our own households, yes, yeah. uh, there are individuals in, within our own households That's who right. don't understand the importance of vote. What do we do in reference to that, in terms of our own personal kind of commitment? to uh, increase in the uh, number of, uh, of individuals, black or white, who are registered to vote. Well, I think Dr. King said something back in 1965, and I think it's still relevant, is that education is very important. That we got to use the tools of education to get people to see the importance of voting. That in any uh, process of participatory democracy, people have to vote. Uh, you can't uh, sit at home and not vote and then complain about the way government is run, you see? And, and I think education is the important thing. I think we also have to knock on doors, talk to people, meet people in churches. And, of course, the black church has always been used uh, as that kind of institution that informs people about what's going on in society and the need to to engage in not only political advocacy, but political participation. So we need to use the institutions of our community, the church, the family, the schools, to educate people, to get them to see the importance of participating in, in, in democracy. That if they want representative democracy, if they want participatory democracy, mm -hmm. then they have to become a part of it. And to sort of make a personal kind of commitment, uh, recognizing that no matter what state you might live in, no matter what kind of conditions that they might throw up in terms of trying to disfran disenfranchise you, exactly. that make sure that you can live up to whatever it is. Yes. If, if it means going out in the weather and standing out in the weather and exactly. waiting at the polls a long time in terms of casting a ballot, then even if it's not easy to do so, exactly. we ought to make up our minds that we are going to do it and that uh, we have no alternative uh, yes. save to do it. I, I mean, yes. I, that, that, that has been my attitude in reference to it. That whatever exactly. the state of Tennessee might throw up in terms of trying to keep me from voting, yeah. I am going to make, if yeah. anybody make it in terms of participating in the suffrage, yeah. I am going to participate. Yes. And I think that if we get that attitude and yeah. if we get a lot of people with that kind of attitude, no matter what they do, yeah. uh, then, you know, then we will be able to vote because yes. there's nothing more important. Than voting because if you have no vote, you have no voice. No voice. And, and that's, that's not good for democracy. That's not good at all. We fought and marched and many died for the creation of true participatory democracy. And if you don't vote, then you're not a part of, of, of that democracy. And, and we had it going well up until quite recently. Exactly. Up until the uh, recent uh, uh, Supreme Court uh, exactly. decision. Because now people are going back to uh, the drawing boards and trying to... Yeah. Uh, reorganize the yeah. uh, counties and et cetera and et cetera. Yeah. And that should embolden us and should inspire us and motivate us mm -hmm. to become a part of the political processes. I think given what is happening now and what has happened over the last uh, year or so with voter suppression and voter intimidation, mm -hmm. that should inspire us mm -hmm. to become a part of the process, to really register to vote, to vote. Uh, that should inspire us. Yeah, and, and, and so hopefully uh, what you've said here today in reference to the assassination of Dr. King and the legacy of Dr. King, and uh, I think that uh, if people can sort of buy into the things that we're talking about now, we'll be all right in reference to, and, yeah. and, and Africans still have to recognize that they're not fighting this war, uh, this battle by themselves. By themselves we didn't fight no. the civil rights war exactly. by themselves. There are a large number of sympathetic folks who are exactly. interested in, in the participation of everybody in the yeah. suffering. And let yeah. me, uh, thank you, Dr. Baldwin, for bringing yes. by that excellent information. Yeah. And let me encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning.